All right then, gang. So now we know a little bit more about how JWTs and cookies work together. Let's put that to good use and work on the sign up process. So when a user signs up in our application, we want to do two things after we get their email and password in the request. First of all, we want to hash their password and then store that user with the hash password in the database. The second part we need to do is we want to instantly log them into the website. So the first part we've already written the code for. We hash the password in the pre-save hook using Mongoose and then we save that document to the database. So that is done. It's the second part that we need to work on. We need to log the user in once the document is created in the database. Now to do that, remember, we create a JWT, attach it to a cookie and then send it to the browser. And for as long as that JWT remains, in the cookie untouched, the user is logged in. And we can verify that every time a user makes a new request because that cookie with the JWT is sent with it to the server. We also need to actually send the signup request from the front end to the server too, when a user submits the form, because at the moment we're not doing that. We're just using Postman to send these requests. So let's tackle some of that in this video. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to start sending the post requests to sign up a new user from the front end, from our web form on the website, instead of always from Postman. So we're gonna do that in a second. But first of all, I just want to quickly clean up some of the code that I created a couple of lessons back when we talked about cookies, because we don't need any of this stuff at the bottom. So let's delete all of that now. But at the top, I still want to require the cookie parser. So make sure that's still there. And we still want to use it as middleware down here. So both of those remain, okay. So now we need to hook up the front end over here so that it sends a request when we submit the form. Now the back end is already done so far. We're still handling this post request to forward slash sign up the same and it's all right here inside the controller. So we just need to hook it up from the front end. Now at the minute all we're doing is logging stuff to the console right here. These values that we get from the form. We don't want to do that. We want to send a request to the server instead. Now, we're gonna be using the Fetch API, an asynchronous code right here. So what I'm gonna do is mark this as an async function so we can use the await keyword down here. Now, I'm gonna place everything inside a try catch block. So if there is some kind of error with the request, then we're gonna be able to catch it right here and do something. All I'm gonna do is log that to the console for now. So this is the kind of error that would occur if there's a problem with the request, if the endpoint is not correct or if there's a server error. So let's now say const result is equal to await and we're gonna await a fetch request. Now the first argument is the endpoint we wanna make the request to. Now that is just forward slash sign up. And the second argument is an options object. And in here we need to specify the method and that is gonna be a post request. So on the server it's gonna to know to handle a post request right here and use this controller function. So we're handling this right here. So that's the type of request. Secondly, we need to pass along a body and that is the data that's going along with the request. Now that needs to be the email and password that a user is trying to sign up with. Now we can't just send it as an object, we need to stringify it so it's a JSON object instead. So let's say JSON.stringify and then pass in the object. Now that object is gonna have an email property, which is the email, and also the password property, which is the password. We have both of those things up here. Remember, we grab those values from the form. Now, because this and this is the same name, and this and this is the same name, we can shorten this to this, and that does exactly the same thing. Okay. So we're passing that JSON data now as the body of this request. The last thing we need to specify right here is the headers to say that the content type is going to be JSON. So content hyphen type and the value is going to be application forward slash JSON. So it knows that JSON is the type of data going to the server. All right. So that's all there is to it. And we're storing the result of that right here, which we're gonna do something with later on. So let's save this now and give this a whirl inside the browser. I'm gonna to go to forward slash sign up, and then I'm gonna create a new user. So mario at google.com, and I'm gonna say test one, two for the password. I'm gonna sign up. Now, nothing really should happen here. In fact, we get a bad request. So let me just take a look over here. 
and I can see I've misspelled application. It should be double P, single L. Save that again. I'm going to refresh over here now and say Mario at google.com and then test one, two. I'm going to sign up again. And again, nothing happens, but we don't get that error now. So hopefully everything has worked, but let me just check inside the database. What I'm going to do is refresh this to see now if we have a second user object. So we can see we have Mario at google.com and the password has been hashed as well. So the next step now is to instantly log them in on the server using a JWT once all of this is done because yeah, we've created a new user, but in the eyes of the server or the browser at the minute, we're not logged into the application. We don't have a JWT. So first let's install a package that we're gonna to use to create JWTs. So let me open up the terminal and open up a new terminal in fact, and I'm gonna say npm install and it's JSON web token, no spaces, and install that. And make sure it goes to your package.json dependencies over here. All right, so now inside the auth controller, I'm going to require that at the top. So let me just paste this in. So const JWT equals require JSON web token. So we're gonna use this to create our JSON web tokens. Now, where do we need to create a JSON web token? Well, right here, after we create a new user, once this is done and it's successful, then we need to create a JSON web token so we can send it back to the browser in a cookie to say, hey, this user is logged in. Then any subsequent requests we get, it's going to send along that cookie to the server with that JWT and we can verify it. So then, all we'll concern ourselves with at the minute is creating and sending a JSON web token. Now, I'm not gonna do all of the code for that right here because we're gonna use it down here as well when we log in and we don't want to repeat our code over and over. Instead, I'll do this in a separate function up here. So, just below the errors function, I'm going to create a second function and that's gonna be called create token. So const and then create token is equal to a function. Now inside this function, we're gonna pass in an ID and that is gonna be used inside the payload of the JSON web token. Now the ID is gonna come from this thing down here where we have the user because this is the user that's just been saved to the database. And remember on that, we get an ID property and we can see that right here, this ID, okay? So we're gonna use that inside the payload. And when we call that function down here, we'll pass it in so it receives it. Okay, so we have the ID. Now we want to create the JSON web token and we actually want to return this as well. So when we call this function, it's returning a value to us. So I'm gonna return JWT, which is the thing we just required at the top over here. And then on that, we use a method called sign. So I'm gonna use the sign method to sign our JWT. Now, the first thing we do is pass in the payload. So that is going to be the ID property inside this object right here. So it's an object with the ID property that we pass in. That's all it is. The second argument is gonna be a secret. So this should be something that's secret to the application. You don't publish it anywhere on any kind of public repository, right? And it should be long instead of this short one that I'm gonna do because I'm just gonna say net ninja secret like so but that is our string secret. And that's what our payload and headers are gonna be hashed with to create this signature. So after that, we need to also pass a third argument, which is an options object. And basically in here, we can set the expires in property. So this is a bit like a cookie. We're saying, how long is this JWT gonna be valid for? If we wanna set it to be valid for three days, then even if the user has that JWT in their browser after three days and sends it to the server on a request, it's not going to be valid anymore and we won't see them as being logged in. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a constant to store some kind of max age in because we'll reuse this later on. So const max age, and that's gonna be equal to three for three days, times 24 for hours, times 60 for minutes, and then times 60 for seconds. Now, this is a value of three days in seconds because this expects a time in seconds, unlike a cookie, which expects a time in milliseconds. So I know that can be quite confusing, but this is in seconds now, three days. And that's how long this JWT will remain valid for. Okay, so now we have 
a function which is creating a token for us and returning it. This thing right here returns us a token with a signature. The headers automatically get applied, right? So we have our payload, the secret that we use in to sign the token, and the headers are automatically applied. This creates the token for us. That's all there is to it. So now we can use this function down here after we create a new user, because at this point we want to log the user in instantaneously. So I'm going to say const token is equal to create token, and we're going to pass in the user ID that we have. So don't forget, we get the user back from the database when it creates that new user. So we can pass in user dot, and we access the ID property by saying underscore ID. And that's this thing over here, if we take a look, underscore ID, okay? So we're passing that thing in now, it creates a token for us and it returns it so we have it stored here. The next thing we need to do is then place that inside a cookie and send that as part of the response, right? So let's do that now. I'm going to say response.cookie to set a cookie and this is going to be called JWT. So that's what we're calling the cookie. You can call it what you want, you know, even that, but it makes no sense. I'm going to call it JWT because that's what this cookie is for. And then we need to say that the value of this is going to be the token. Now, after that, I'm going to pass through the options object again to say this is going to be HTTP only. So we can't access and change it or do anything with it from the front end JavaScript code. So that's going to be set to true. And also, I'm going to give this a max age because we gave our JWT a max age as well. And I want this to be three days as well. So the cookie is going to expire after three days as well as the JWT. So I can take the max age variable, but remember this is in seconds, so I need to times this by 1000 for it to be three days. Okay, so we're sending that cookie now, and also we're sending this response, but instead of sending the whole user, which contains the hashed password and all that kind of jazz, instead let's just send the user ID. So let's say user is going to be user dot underscore ID. Remember, we get access to that right here, and this is the ID property. So we're just sending that back as a response, as well as the cookie, to the front end. Okay, so then, let's try this out. This is the moment of truth. Let's go over here, and over here, I'm going to refresh over here, and create a new user. So I'm going to call this one Yoshi at google.com and then test one, two. So let me sign up and then hopefully we'll see a response over here, which is the user ID. In fact, we might not see that because we don't log anything to the console on the front end, but we will see inside our application tab that we should have a JWT token once we do this. So let's sign up and let's then see over here. Yep, we see that JWT token is created. So over here, we can see we have an expires date and also we have HTTP only so we can't access it from the front end and also this is the token right here. So now in the future every request we make for other pages on this website that cookie with that JWT is going to be sent to the server so then the server can later on use it to verify a user is logged in. So next off we're going to finish off the front end process by handling errors and redirecting the user after signing up.